So let's talk about osteoporosis. Well, we know osteo means bone, right? And then for porosis kind of sounds like porous or pores. So that already gives us a hint as to what's going on. The bones are porous. So osteoporosis is a disease of bone demineralization. So as the bone loses its minerals, it decreases in mass or density. So what's the number one mineral found in bones? Calcium, of course. So what we see is that there's an increased rate of bone resorption. Resorption is when calcium is pulled out of the bones to go into the bloodstream. And that happens when there's not enough calcium in the blood. The problem is that this resorption process is happening faster than the bones can actually repair themselves or rebuild. So we end up with this overall loss of calcium from the bones and they become very porous, osteoporosis, got it? So if you see here, this is the normal density of a bone, and this is the density of a bone with osteoporosis. So we can see how it's much less dense than a regular bone. So think of it like wood. A normal bone is like hardwood, right? Osteoporosis, it makes it more like styrofoam. So we know hardwood takes lots of force to break, but styrofoam breaks really easily. And so these patients are at very high risk for fractures. Even with the slightest force, their bones can just crack. Now, females are at greater risk because of uh, the loss of estrogen, especially later in life. That causes increased bone resorption. So again, the resorption happens faster than the rebuilding. Um, other things is use of corticosteroids. This can also increase bone resorption. That's why we see osteoporosis in patients with things like Cushing syndrome. That extra cortisol makes them lose calcium from their bones. And then, of course, a calcium deficiency will make the body pull it from the bones even more. So when we're assessing these patients, the first thing we'll notice is that they have one or more of these risk factors. Maybe they're female. Um, for example, like an elderly female who doesn't consume enough calcium and she's taking corticosteroids, right? She's gonna be at really high risk. We also see kyphosis of the spine or kyphosis of the spine. Um, as the bones lose their density, they become compressed under the weight of just standing. And so they start to bend forward and they become kind of soggy. Think about that styrofoam analogy and how easy it is to compress. So now they smush down and the patient starts to bend forward. So a kyphotic or a kyphotic curve is this curvature of the thoracic spine where it curves and they lean forward. And what we end up seeing is that they actually lose some height because of this bending down. And so you'll see, you know, old ladies will say things like, oh, I used to be 5'6", but I'm, now I'm 5'3". I swear my grandmother gets shorter every time I see her because she's 83 and she has osteoporosis. Now then we can also see bone pain or some achiness as well as fractures of the pelvis or the hip. Remember, it doesn't take much force to break an osteoporotic bone. So if the patient were to fall, or be in a motor vehicle collision, there's a high, high likelihood for fracture. As far as medical management, we wanna have them increase their calcium intake or take calcium supplements, but they also need to increase their vitamin D intake. Why? Vitamin D is required for absorption of calcium. And if we don't have it, we can't absorb our calcium. Okay, so if we don't have calcium, then we lose calcium from our bones. And we can also give medications that help decrease bone resorption. Um, they are called, big fancy word, are you ready? They are called bisphosphonates. Two examples are alendronate and resendronate, or Fosamax and Actinel. So Fosamax, Fossa, usually refers to the bone. Max, maximize, or increasing bone density with these. Now, um, one thing to note, because they do uh, are affected by the environment in your stomach is that they need to be eaten on an empty stomach. So at least 30 minutes to an hour prior to eating. Otherwise, they're going to have a lot of issues with um, the calcium and things that are in the food. Okay. Now, as far as nursing care, we want to encourage weight bearing exercises and we can get PT and OT involved. Why This helps to strengthen not only their muscles, but also their bones and it increases bone density. So weight bearing exercises are really important now we want patients to use assistive devices if they need, because we need to prevent falls no matter what. You know, any kind of fall, any kind of bump into a door, um, any kind of injury of any kind can uh, 
cause a fracture. So preventing falls is really important. Keep a hazard-free environment. Make sure they have their call light within reach. Make sure their belongings are within reach and that they have those assistive devices. And then we want to educate them on their dietary needs. You know, milk is not the only thing they can use to increase calcium. They can also get calcium from green leafy vegetables. Broccoli and spinach have lots and lots of calcium. Now, if the patient does have a hip fracture, what we'll see when they present is their leg will be uh, shortened and rotated externally. That's the classic sign of a hip fracture. Now, these patients usually require traction until they can go to the OR for a hip replacement. We'll talk more about traction in the fractures lesson. Now, if your patient does end up having to get uh, a hip replacement, then we, uh, we need to make sure we're checking their neurovascular status uh, distal to that surgery. So if they had their right hip replaced like this, then we want to check popliteal pulses, pedal pulses, post tibial pulses. We want to check um, color, numbness, tingling, all of these things on that patient's foot to make sure that they're having good blood flow and good nerve function distal to the replacement. Then with any of these patients, hip fractures, hip replacements, Positioning post-op is extremely important and they absolutely must follow these rules or their hip could dislocate it, refracture. So they should not be abducting their leg, which means um, sending it out to the side. So no abduction, no crossing the midline. So we don't want them crossing their legs. We don't want them adducting farther than midline. They should always try to keep their legs in a neutral position. And then they should also never bend the hips past 90 degrees. So this also means when they want to go to the bathroom and they go to sit down, we don't want them at this 90 degree angle. So what we'll do is we'll put a little seat on their toilet so that they can sit at less than 90 degrees without having to bend their hips too far. So we'll put a seat on the toilet. We'll give them a special reacher or grabber device so they can pick things up without bending over. They may need help putting on their socks and shoes since they can't bend, so we need to consider those things. And then we want to make sure they follow their doctor's orders in terms of weight bearing and use assistive devices for safety. Now, if you want to review different assistive devices, check out Fundamentals Module 8. So top priority nursing concepts for a patient with osteoporosis are going to be mobility and safety there, uh, nutrition and safety. We've got to prevent falls. It is so important, guys. They are so at high risk for fracture, okay? And then, of course, we want to get their calcium and vitamin D up in their diet. Dairy products, green leafy vegetables, all really, really good for that. So let's recap quickly. Osteoporosis is demineralization of the bone caused by increased resorption of calcium out of the bone. So we see a net loss of calcium. It's common in women and patients taking steroids, especially the older they are and the longer they've been on the steroids. These bones become porous. Patients will experience joint pain. They may experience kyphosis of the spine where it bends forward and they are at super high risk for fractures. Remember that they must have vitamin D to be able to absorb calcium out of their food. So we don't just want to increase calcium. We also want to increase vitamin D. We're going to provide for safety, provide a hazard-free environment, prevent falls, and then encourage weight-bearing exercises to help improve their strength. And then remember, if your patient does require hip replacement surgery, make sure you're doing neurovascular checks post-op and putting them in the right position to avoid dislocation or to avoid refracturing that hip. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you want to just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.